first let's start with making sure we're using the proper wording. So it's not actually a new strain. Um, so what happens is when you have a virus, such as the one we have now, it's common for the DNA to mutate. Um, that's expected, it's common, it randomly happens. Some of these mutations are good, some of these are mutations are bad. Just because it's mutating doesn't necessarily mean anything one way or the other. Um, so when enough of these mutations occur in the genetic material that it changes the actual biological property or function of the virus, that's now a new strain. So what we have here is not a new strain. It's basically the same exact strain that we've been looking at that's spread across, you know, globally pretty much. Um, what we have here is an isolate. So an isolate is just basically where we see those same um, mutations in the genetic material, but they just haven't accumulated enough or, or changed to such a degree that the biological properties are any different. So when we're looking at this isolate, what they're saying is particularly they're looking at the proteins that form the spikes on the surface of these coronaviruses. So you've seen the picture of like the spikes coming out, right? And so they've actually tracked that there's been about 14 or so of these mutations in the proteins that comprise these spikes that are uh, they've seen spread across the globally. And of these, there's one in particular that they see the most commonly. And so they are hypothesizing or speculating that because it's so widely uh, you know, transmissible, because it's so widely spread, that this is, might be due to the fact that this mutation causes the virus to be more infectious. Um, but again, this is their hypothesis. So, and it hasn't actually been proven yet. Um, there's still a lot more research that needs to be done in order to prove that this particular mutation makes the virus more infectious or transmissible. Um, one thing for certain that they actually already have established that is some good news is that this mutation doesn't make the virus any more lethal. So I think that's also something important and a good sigh of relief for that. Not necessarily. Um, as I mentioned before, we're, when you hear people talking about mutations in the virus, that's expected. That's, you know, that's not necessarily concerning or alarming. We expect those mutations to happen. Now, what scientists and researchers are going to do is they're going to do their due diligence and track down which of these mutations are uh, happening the most frequently and then doing follow-up studies to see whether that makes the virus you know, more lethal or, or possibly less lethal, less lethal. So in this instance, it doesn't at all, right? Because we're still dealing with the same strain of the virus. So the, the mutation shouldn't necessarily affect the effectiveness of the vaccine. A caveat would be, though, is if, let's say, um, the protein changes drastically, right, the, the spike. Now, if a vaccine is formulated such that they're using um, the current spike on the current or the more common uh, you know, variant of, of the uh, virus, and if the antibodies are targeted towards that, and now the, the, uh, the spikes have changed dramatically such that the antibodies that previously would have recognized the original spike don't recognize the new spike, well, then that could potentially cause problems. Um, but again, that hasn't been kind of borne out just yet. I think it depends on what particular aspect the virus is being targeted um, by these vaccines. So uh, the answer to that is that we really can't say at this point, because um, we also don't know how much and to what degree uh, the vaccine, or sorry, the virus will mutate each season, um, but it is a possibility. There is a talk that it might. Again, I don't have a crystal ball, so I can't see into the future, but there is a suggestion that that could be the case. And so we do need to be prepared to you know, be encountering this again in large numbers next season. If it does come back again in another wave, um, it is expected or suspected that it would be around the same time as the normal flu season. So it would be kind of a double whammy. They're calling it the second week crash where you know, patients seem to be doing are stable or even on the road to recovery. And then all of a sudden, they suddenly and rapidly de decompensate, or meaning they crash and become critically ill. Um, this is a little bit unusual because it's not what we normally see in the normal course of other diseases, right? Usually we see progressively progressive improvement or progressive you know, deterioration, but it's rare that we see somebody who seems pretty stable or seems to be on the upward trajectory all of a sudden uh, crash. So uh, doctors are seeing it but thankfully they are aware of it and they know to be on the lookout for it. And um, they've changed a little bit some of their practices and protocols to account for this.